What's up folks, Man Amazing here, and welcome back to the channel. All right, so now we're starting to get into some fun stuff. Getting away from the usual beginner how to walk type stuff. Today, as you've guessed by the title, we're going to work on our pickup. So since we are working on a first person shooter, the first thing I want you guys to do is to go to your first person controller, uh, pull down the camera swivel, the first person camera, and you can see here that we have the weapon. Now with the weapon, it's just a mesh or an asset I downloaded from the Unity Asset Store. Um, I have a long background in Unity, so I have a lot of asset packages um, that I don't use. Uh, this one was free. They have a lot of free things on there. If you have your own or you, know, you found it on the net or whatever the case, just download something to use. You can see here, it's just a mesh. I didn't even put the materials on it, which I'm gonna actually have to do a video about because, yeah, put that on the list. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a uh, simple uh, gun with no material that's uh, disabled by default. So we're gonna leave it like that and set it the way you wanna set it. I think I wanna move mines back just a little bit more. So let me hit check it out oh that's too far back let's actually move it back try it now yeah that's fine maybe raise it up a little bit well, actually not a little bit we want to take off snapping which is this button here that way i have to rain yeah that's fine all right you same with that now, as you can see over here, we have our pickup. So the way this is set up, we're going to create an entity, call it pickup, and we're going to add a trigger area component. We're also going to add a box shape, which actually is mandatory when you add a trigger area. We can leave that in game view for testing. So we want to test it out and we want to see the size of the shape. So click that. We want to add a script canvas um, called Rotate Object. Now, if you're downloading the toolbox from my gun roll, this will already be in there by the time you guys see this video. Uh, but if not, it's a very simple script. I'll show it to you guys. Uh, you can do it on the fly if you want. All right, once you have that, the second object is going to be the pickup mesh. And that's just the whatever the mesh is going to be that you're picking up. In our case, it's the weapon. So the exact same weapon that's on our first person controller is inside the mesh. And if I was to play this to show you guys what the rotate object script canvas does, I mean, it's in the name, but it gives it that, you know, see, just rotates it. So if I was to take off that game view, which looks weird. We have that. Cool. All right, so let's set this up. So the rotate object is real simple. Let's open that. It's really just a uh, variable for rotation speed, another variable for entity to rotate, because uh, you might want to rotate a different entity that the script is on. And we're using the on tick. So retain, we're uh, multiplying the rotation speed by the delta of the tick. And then we're giving that result to the rotate around local Z. All right, very simple script. Let's exit out of that. All right, now let's get into the meat and potatoes, which is the actual pickup. So you can call it whatever you want. Of course, uh, I'm gonna call my simple pickup. I'm gonna open that up. And when you do, you guys should already know how to set up a very simple uh, Lua script. But if you don't, this is all you need. Now, of course, you will want to add a 
uh, function for on activate and also on deactivate. Uh, those are pretty much mandatory when it comes to Lua as well. So we don't have any properties. So the very first thing we want to do is to connect to the trigger area notification bus. And we do that here. This allows us to set up a listener for the event on trigger area enter. So make sure you add that, type that out. And then we haven't talked about game and notifications on this channel, but since from here on out, we're gonna be using them quite often, I'll give you guys a brief explanation for those who don't know about them. So the gameplay notification bus is used in Lumberyard to communicate between the scripts and Lua. We want to send a Boolean type uh, piece of information, you know, to say that we have a weapon, you know, true or false. So that's why I have this verb here called self.equipable equals one. Right? All right, so now, uh, if you haven't already, you should add a function and it should say on trigger area enter. And we're going to add the collide it, which is going to give us information on the collision. Um, so we're going to check to see if the entity that entered has a tag of player. So it's if tag component request bus dot event dot have. So we're gonna go if tag component request bus dot event dot has tag. The collided is going to be the entity that entered. And we're gonna go with the tag of player if that's all true, then we're going to first destroy the entity. Then we're going to first destroy the pickup. Once we do that, we want to send a gameplay notification that the player has a weapon now. So to set that up, we're going to set an event ID first. So create a variable, name it whatever you want, but our naming conventions to help you out should be something something ID. Uh, we want to point to the gameplay notification ID and we're going to call collide it because we want to only call this event on the entity that entered the area. So the entity name is going to be can equip, which is the event here, can equip. Uh, we're going to send a float, which is like I said before, is uh, either zero or one to set the Boolean of equipped or or can equip or cannot equip. And then we want to set another variable and I'm going to set uh, name it event call or event handler or whatever you want to name it. And that is actually going to call uh, set up the listener, which is the gameplay notification bus event on event begin. So when this, this event is called on the collided object, then that's when the code will run. And that's when we can, you know, do some other things. So on event begin, and then we're going to get the ID that we set up previously. And then we're going to pass in the information, which is we're passing in um, the variable equipable and it's set to one. Make sure in your deactivate that you are disconnecting from the notification bus and also setting it to nil. All right, so make sure you save that. I'm gonna minimize this. Now, <clears throat> now we need to set up something on our player controller to receive the event that the player can now use a weapon. So for what I did, if you go to your player controller, we want to add another Lua script called Weapon Manager. So let's open that up. All right, minimize it, huh? All right, so weapon manager. So it's very simple right now because we don't have a lot of weapons or a lot of things going on. So you're going to set up a, another Lua script. Mine is called weapon. Uh, it has one property called gun in the entity. Uh, this is going to allow us to turn on weapon that we had hidden. All right, so in your on activate, you're going to set up the same calls that you set up in the trigger area script. So we have an equip ID. It's going to also call the gameplay notification 
ID. Um, since we're calling it on our player, we want to have self.entity ID. The same event that we set up before, which is can equip. The same information pass, which is a, which is a float. We're also going to have a clip call, which is also calling to the gameplay notification bus. And it's registered to self, which is us. And it's registering the ID so it'll know what ID to listen out for when that call is sent to our player. So here is the event on event begin. Remember, we sent that for the pickup here. Remember, we sent that. So that event, we want to call that event in our weapon manager. So then we're going to pass in data. The data that we're passing in is the equipable which is set to one, right? So that's the information that we want to read and do something with. So in that code, we want to see if data is equal to one, which means the player can equip a weapon. If it was zero, then that means the player cannot. We want to get the mesh component request bus. We want to set the visibility of the gun, which is the, uh, the property that we set up here, and we want to set it to true. That will give the illusion that we pick up the weapon and immediately set the weapon onto the player, and now we have a weapon to use. Very simple. And again, in our on deactivate, we want to disconnect from the call because we're no longer listening for it once we destroy that entity, and we want to set it to nil. So if you have all that set up properly, if you follow along and follow my code and just type it out the way that I have it, when we, if we minimize that, we go into the game and we hit play, we have the weapon here. And if I roll over it, it's destroyed. And now we have the weapon. And we can look up, we can look down, look up, look down. So yeah. We are coming along. All right, guys. So in this video, we set up a pickup. We tied a mesh to that pickup. We gave it a visual flare with rotation. We set it up to where the player collides with the pickup. And when he does, it sets a variable in the weapon manager that allows the player to quote unquote equip a weapon. Hope this video was very beneficial to you guys. In the next video, we're going to learn how to shoot. And then after that, we're going to learn how to switch into a different weapon. So other than that, I hope you guys are having a very dope day. If you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below. If you enjoyed this format, please, please give me some feedback in the comments. Like I said, I'm still tweaking it and how to go about it. Uh, I might break things into smaller videos just because I'm not actually writing it out. That way you guys can uh, digest it a little bit better. I know this video had a lot going on uh, with uh, Lua scripts and going back and forth and the gameplay notification bus. So let me know if I should break things like that down to smaller bites. Um, something I kind of want to get feedback on. But hope you guys are having a very dope day. Hope you guys are prospering in your projects. And until next time, guys, keep developing.